Hey guys, it's me, Liner. Welcome back to another Red Dead Redemption 2 guide video. In this one, I have an amazing complete guide to every unique item in game you need to find, including how to get every hidden or secret weapon, all collectible clothing, hats and masks, and any unique items needed for crafting trinkets and talismans which give you unique perks. Check the description for timestamps and more info as it's a long video and I've tried to do these in order by chapter during the game to make it easy as possible to follow. Over 50 items are available to find starting in chapter 2, which is most of them, along with another four which become available after chapter three through six. Keep in mind there are eight missable items, but only one is time sensitive, meaning it's a story mission and you need to get it done during a certain chapter. That is the rare rolling block rifle in chapter three. The other ones are missable, but only from forgetting to loot enemies, but they can be done at any time. But I have put the info in the description. If the video is helpful, a like is very much appreciated. We start then in chapter two in Valentine. The first item is the Wild West Heroes 132, a collectible book at a small shack south of Valentine. Go to where I am on the map, the book is sitting in a drawer inside the building on the right. For our next collectible we're heading west to Big Valley. This is the location of two items, the Wide Blade Knife and the Miner's Headlamp. Both items are located inside of the mine, you need to interact with the dynamite to block the entrance and the items are inside, next to and on a body. Just south of here is the stone hatchet, however it's only available if you've completed the relevant mission on GTA Online. Go to exactly where this is on the map and you will find the stone hatchet if you've unlocked the relevant missions. To the west of here, in the middle of a field, is the Pagan Ritual Mask. It's located on top of the corpse and it's pretty easy to discover as there's nothing else really around it in the field. From here, head up north to find the Antler Blade. This collectible knife is found inside of a dead bear just off the main path. From here we're heading just up the way a bit to the old hermit's shack. The hermit will try to kill you so you have to be careful here, but once he is dead you can find the first of two torn treasure map pieces which show you the location of Otis Miller's treasure. However I will be showing the treasure location later in the video so if you don't pick this one up it doesn't matter too much. Our next item is the double bit hatchet, a weapon located inside of a tree stump to the east of your last location. It's easy to see on the map, just northwest of Wallace Station, next to an old chimney in the ground, surrounded by feds, so you can't really miss it. Now, before we go on to our next collectible, we are going to find the gold earrings, and these are our first missable items. Go to the location on the map, and it's called Watson's Cabin. Head in and loot the basement if you want to. This will trigger another part of a house robbery actually, and you can return later in the game to loot the house and kill all the occupants. However, you can get what you need right now. We're after a pair of gold earrings, required for crafting the boar tusk talisman, and you can pick them up right now. Again, if you want to come back later, you can still get them then. In the house, in the drawer with the picture, is the pair of earrings inside of a box. However, this is where you have to be careful. The earrings are actually counted as valuables, and so they can be sold despite being a unique item. It will stop you from crafting the talisman and prevent you from unlocking all of the in-game perks if you have already sold them off. So you have to be careful here that if you've already got them that you don't sell them, and once you pick them up that you don't accidentally sell them to a fence for money. So just be careful here when you do that. Next, from the gold earrings, head north to Mount Hagen. We will be here at the very end of the video for an item you get at the very end of the game. However, located where I am on the map is the Marion Helmet. From the Marion Helmet, we are heading north again across the Isabella Lake. Found in a chest under a rock beside the lake is the Cobalt Petrified Wood. One of the items needed for crafting the Bortus Talisman, which reduces your horse stamina and health core drain by 10%. Also be on the lookout here for the rare White Arabian Horse. It's one of the best horses you can find in the game, and it's located just in this location. Next up is the Otis Miller and the Arabian Prince book. We are heading a lot further south to just north of Valentine at Clausen's Rest. The book is inside of the shack on a nightstand. Next up, the Hunter Hatchet. 
The hatchet is in a tree stump just behind a shack that sits on the river. It's really easy to spot if you go to this location. Be careful here, all of these unique hatchets, if you throw them, then you don't pick them up, then they can be lost. However, they will already have updated in your journal, working towards your 100% completion, but you still don't really want to lose any of your weapons. Next, my favorite hat in game, the Nevada hat. This is really close by the hunter hatchet, however, it is up a cliff. So you're going to need to head back west to find a way up the cliff and then follow the train tracks along until you come across a waterfall. The Nevada hat sits behind the waterfall and it's just sitting there for you to pick up. From here, we're heading east and right on top of the map is the ancient tomahawk. It's found inside a wooden target that sits above the Calumet Ravine. Just follow the path around and it's really easy to spot. South of your location, we're heading to Moonshine Pond. On a tree stump, like all the hatchets, the hewing hatchet just sits outside of the shack here. While you're in the area as well, you can also go into the shack by climbing up the tree trunk that's fallen down, and inside you will find a recipe for the homing tomahawk, although you can purchase it from fences later in the game if you want to. From here, we're heading south again. Just above the new Hanover sign at the Heartlands Overflow, you should find the black sheep. This unique animal has a gold wedding ring located on him. The item isn't for anything, surprisingly. It's just meant to be sold off as a valuable, but you might as well get it on your way to the next one, which is the Scarecrow Hat. Just south of the Black Sheep in a field, there's a unique hat to find, the Scarecrow Hat, and it's located, of course, on top of the Scarecrow. You may have to shoot the hat to get it down from the Scarecrow's head. From here, head east again, a small shack before you enter Ansberg. The hatchet is in a tree stump at the back of the shack. Next up then, we're heading to the top of the Ansberg area. At the top of Roanoke Valley is the Meteorite House. A small shack that a meteorite has struck. Head inside and pick it up out of the ground. Again, like the gold wedding band, this item is a valuable more than anything else. However, it's still worth picking up as it's on the way to some of the other collectibles. Next then, two items together. An old hermit lives at this location here and he will shoot you on sight. Kill him quickly and then you may loot him for two things. The rare shotgun, a unique weapon that only spawns on this NPC. If you don't pick it up or you die before you pick it up or leave the area before you pick it up, it will disappear forever and you won't be able to get it back any other way. So make sure you pick it up as soon as possible. Also in this location inside of the Hermit Shack is the second half of Otis Miller's treasure map inside of a drawer. Just west of here is the old Viking tomb. You will find three items here, although one of them is not really that important. The first is the Viking helmet located inside of the old tomb. Also inside of the tomb, if you destroy the skulls, you will find the Viking comb. On the outside of the tomb, inside of a skull, is the Viking Hatchet. From here we're heading into Ansberg to find the rusted double bit hatchet. It's found in a tree stump just to the north of the town and it's just in front of one of the coal processing buildings. Head south from Ansberg to a small camp. Here you will find the pig mask hanging on one of the posts of the slaughterhouse area. South of here at Fort Brennan, you will find the Civil War hat and knife. Head in the main entrance and the building on the left, you can head into the basement to find the knife on the table and the hat will be on the floor in the same room. There's also a chest in this room with a gold nugget, I believe. And there's also a horse tonic pamphlet in the fort as well if you're interested, but like all pamphlets, you can also buy them from any fence. Just to the west, in a small shack in the woods, is the second Otis Miller book, at Osman Grove on the nightstand. South of here again, just above the O on the Lemoyne sign on the map, there is an abandoned schoolhouse with the final Otis Miller book inside. On the desk, Otis Miller and the boy from New York. Slightly to the east of the swamps above Saw the Knee is the Catskull Mask. It's located in the shack that is destroyed 
on the back wall. You'll have to crouch in order to get through here. Head south to the bottom of the map, just outside of Saudani, where the Kamasa River meets the Ladashe River. There are some very small islands infested with alligators here. The Broken Pirate Sword, the best melee weapon in the game, is located here on a small boat. Head east from here to Rhodes. Just a few steps north of the Sheriff Station in Rhodes is an abandoned house. Inside you will find the Abalone Shell Fragment, which is needed for crafting the Bison Horn Talisman that decreases your stamina drain by 10%. Finally then guys, off the coast of Clement Point, an island in Flatiron Lake, you will find an old ship with the Tricorn Hat. That just leaves us with a couple of other important collectibles to find, the Ram Skull Mask and the Otis Miller Treasure itself. Both are in New Austin however, which is not accessible until later in the game. It's impossible to travel there, so you will have to wait until then to get it. But since it's a collectible, I will show you the two locations right now before we move on to different types. North of Tumbleweed at Rathskagler Fork is the Ram Skull Mask. It's hanging on one of the wooden pillars in the abandoned pergola, and it's really easy to find there, as there's not much else around. Finally then guys, the Otis Miller treasure. It's found just east of Ramskull Mask, inside of a small cave. Head in and when you're in there you will find a treasure chest with the Otis Miller revolver inside, plus a couple of other things. And it's definitely worth getting as it's one of the better guns in the game. But guys, so that is all the missable collectibles found in the game world that you can pick up. The rest of the items are all found during missions of some kind. And as I said, there are some other collectibles in the game world, but they're all just valuables and they're not really important for anything else. So then guys, let's move on to some other things that you can get in chapter two, starting with the missable midnight pistol, Flacco's revolver and the Granger revolver. To get all three of these weapons, you get them from one mission in the game, which is called Noblest of Men and Women. Essentially, you have to find and kill all four gunslingers. Three of them, Emmett Granger, Flacco Hernandez and Billy Midnight have unique weapons on them to collect. I won't go through the entire mission but all you need to know is when you duel all three during the mission and you kill them, make sure to loot their guns as, like the rare shotgun from earlier, if you don't pick them up straight away and you leave the area then they will disappear forever and there's no other way of getting them in the game. So when you're in chapter 2 you can start doing this mission by talking to Theodore Levine in Valentine, he's in one of the saloons and you can start this mission and you can just do it whenever you want to after that but like I said make sure to pick up the revolvers when you do it or else you won't be able to get them later. Next then guys some other stuff is also available in chapter 2 and these are all items found by collecting in-game collectibles for certain NPCs. Dream catchers, dinosaur bones, rock carvings and cigarette cards. We're going to start then with the dream catchers. By collecting all 20 dream catchers, you will get the ancient arrowhead, a unique item, the only item in game that grants a unique bonus that is not a craftable one. It allows your stamina to last twice as long when you draw your bow, and all the locations are on the map here. There are also dozens of location guides on YouTube already, so of course I'm not going to go over all 20 locations for you guys. But once you do find them, to get the arrowhead, it's located at the Elysium Pool Waterfall in Roanoke Edge, inside next to the cave painting. Next then we get two different things from collecting dinosaur bones, the unique jawbone knife and the quartz chunk. You can start the mission at any time by talking to the stranger who's close to Valentine and you have to find 30 different dinosaur bones. After you collect one dinosaur bone you will get the quartz chunk and after you collect all 30 you will be rewarded with the jawbone knife. The quartz chunk is needed to craft bear claw talisman which decreases the speed at which health lowers so it's very useful. And of course the jawbone knife is a unique knife found nowhere else. Again all the locations are on this map and there's tons of guys already for them so I'm not going to go over them. But remember to get your actual rewards you have to go to the post office and send the dinosaur bones to the stranger in order to be rewarded. Next then the old brass compass and this is rewarded by getting all 10 rock carvings in the game. The compass is used to make the Ravenclaw talisman which slows weapon degradation by 10%. And again, to get the compass, send in all carvings at the post office. And then once you've done that, you will get a letter from the stranger and the compass will be located in his cabin when you go see him. 
Our final thing that's available to do in chapter two, although all these can be done in future chapters if you want to, is to get the Civil War Cannoncuffs. Complete one of the 12 sets of collectible cigarettes. There's 144 of them found in the game world, but you can also get them from random packs or you can buy random packs of cigarettes, so it's not really difficult to do. In fact, if you want to do the easy way, you can get all 144 by simply buying loads of packs at any general store, and it should cost you around $2,000. Getting all 144 should only take 10 minutes to do, and take your items to the post office again to receive your rewards. There's no point in spending days trying to collect all 144 from the game world. So guys, that is all the things that are available starting in Chapter 2. Like I said, you can do all of those in future chapters if you want to. We're moving on to items that you can get starting in Chapter 3, and both of them are missable. So the next item on our list is our final unique item for crafting talismans, the Lion's Paw. To get this, it's really easy. During Chapter 3, a new stranger mission becomes available called Heath British, of course, found between Emerald Ranch and Rhodes. Start the mission and you have to complete all five different missions, so it will take you quite a while. But on the final mission, you must track down and kill a lion. After it's dead, make sure to pick up the missable lion's paw, as it will disappear if you don't pick it up right now. Our next item though is missable if you don't do it during chapter 3, and that is getting the rare rolling block rifle. The collectible sniper rifle not found anywhere else. During the chapter 3 mission Magicians for Sport, you are requested to find Trelawney. I'm not going to go over the entire mission as I don't want to give away any spoilers for that, but right at the end of the mission you will kill a sniper in a barn, just as the mission ends. Make sure to pick up the rifle before leaving as it will disappear forever. So guys, that is the only time sensitive missable item in the game. It can only be done in chapter 3, all the other ones can be done in pretty much any chapter. They're only missable if you forget to loot bodies for the item. But this one can't be done at any other time except for in Chapter 3. The item is also missable if you don't loot him, and you won't get the rifle if you replay the mission either, so make sure that you do pick it up before moving on to Chapter 4. That is all the items you can get from Chapter 3 then. The Lion's Paw could be done at any time, but the Magicians for Sport 1 is only available at Chapter 3. Next then, we have two items that become available during Chapter 4. The first one is Algernon's Revolver and the Exotic Hat. After you do the mission in Chapter 4 called the Gilded Cage, a new stranger mission becomes available called Duchess and Other Animals, where you have to find collectible orchids. Once you start the quest, you will need to complete all five stages, finding over 190 orchids in total, so it's a really long one. And once you do that, like the dinosaur bones and the dreamcatchers, etc., you'll be rewarded with Algernon's revolver, a unique weapon, and the exotic hat. And this is one of the only things I don't have yet because I'm still working on it. The second last item to find in the game is Callaway's revolver. After you complete the mission Last Night of Debauchery in Chapter 4, you can return to the Sheriff in Ansberg to get the location of Slyn Gramp. The final part of the mission, Noblest of Men and Women, the quest where we got the Flacco's revolver, Granger's Revolver and Midnight Pistol. After you duel Slim Grant, make sure to pick up the unit Callaway Revolver, it's not located anywhere else. Our final item in the game then to find is Micah's Revolver. After the shootout at the end of the American Venom quest, the final mission of the game, return to the location to loot for Micah's Revolver, located just beside where we found the Marion Hat. This is the final weapon to find in game, the rest of the weapons should be mentioned in the guide already, been rewarded for previous missions, or available to buy at any gunsmith or fence. Guys, it's been a long video, but you should now have every unique item in game, clothing, hat and mask, every unique and more importantly missable weapon. Also I showed you how to find all hidden items required for crafting trinkets and talismans, which are required in turn for unique in-game perks. You will need to find all legendary animals though to finish those. The only collectibles you need to get now get in game are the Legend of the East Satchel, which I have a video on and to complete all 90 challenges to unlock all bandoliers, belts, holsters, and the Legend of East outfit. Guys, subscribe and turn on notifications to see all my guides and all the updates for Red Dead Online going forward. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.